Hello, Ilian here, and in this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to activate Intel AMT manually using MBX, how to access the built-in web page of Intel AMT, and also how to access uh, the features of AMT using Mesh Commander. So let's take a look at this now. So if you've been remotely managing computers for a while, you may be familiar with Intel Active Management Technology. It's a hardware agent that's built into the computer and allows you to remotely manage computers even if they're uh, off or if the operating system doesn't work. So on my left here, I have a Intel AMT computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch to that screen. So this is the AMT computer. And I'm going to reboot it. And as it restarts, I'm going to hit the Control P keys. Control P. And uh, now some BIOSes may have MEBX included. Sometimes you need to activate the Control P key in the BIOS first, and then you can go in and um, and do it while it boots. But for this computer, I'm just going to hit Control P while it boots, and it's going to take a little bit of time here. Um, and then once I'm there, I'm going to see a menu, which is a BIOS extension to the management engine. So there you go. My computer just started booting. And now this is the important part where really hitting Control P will make the difference here. And there you go. So now I am in the MEBX, or Management Engine BIOS extension. So the first thing you want to do in this menu is you want to log in. If this is the first time you've ever logged into this uh, menu, the default password is admin, A-D-M-E-N. Uh, just be cognizant or that the uh, keyboard is going to be the keyboard layout for US English. There is no keyboard mappings. So if you have a, for example, a French keyboard or so on, just be aware that the password here is going to be the password using a US English keyboard layout. So I am going to type in my password because I've already said it. But if it's the first time, you are going to be typing admin. And then you'll be prompted to change the password to something else. It must be eight characters or longer in length. It must have one um, lowercase, one uppercase, one numeric, and one non-alpha numeric character. So once you're in the menu, um, you're going to go here in AMT. You're going to make sure it's enabled. It should be. Then you go in AMT configuration. If your computer is already activated with AMT like this one, I am going to do full unprovision and unprovision it. So this is going to take me about 20 seconds here, but it's basically going to clear AMT and reset it completely to the, to the startup values. Now, uh, once I'm you know, reset it to the startup values, I am going to re-enable it, and I'm going to go ahead and set a few uh, network co configuration settings. So the first thing we're going to do is activate network access. We are going to say yes. So now AMT is activated and allowed to talk to the network. We are also going to go in network setup, and we're going to type the name of the computer. Now, this name is the name that Intel AMT will use to register to the DHCP server when the computer is off or the OS is off. And so if you have a different name here than you have in your OS, then what will happen is when the computer is sleeping, it will have one name. But when it's on and the OS is running, you, it will have a different name in the DHCP server. So you probably want to match them up. Um, but uh, it's not a big consequence if you don't. Now, domain name, uh, this is going to be the domain name of my local network. So whatever local network domain name you, you have, you use that. And then you hit escape, escape. And I'm done for now. Uh, notice here, actually, user consent. It says KVM here. I'm going to put none. And we'll see in a minute uh, what difference that that, does that have. So I'm going to exit and say yes. And now I've activated Intel AMT. So I'm going to switch back to my dual screen mode here. On the bottom right, I have the AMT machine. On the top left, I have my 
um, management machine. Now it's super important that the management, it's, it's a different machine uh, that is on a network. And also that my computer on the upper left is, uh, is connected to, through the network, through the hardware ethernet port of the AMT machine. This makes a difference because AMT captures traffic coming from that port. So if your AMT machine uses a USB interface or a 4G modem or something like that, then AMT won't be able to capture the, the, the traffic. So I open the browser, and the first thing we're going to do is HTTP colon slash slash the IP address or the name of the machine we're trying to access. I happen to know it. Otherwise, you can go on the, on the AMT machine and type ipconfig. And you are going to access a web server that is on port 16992. Now, normally you would type port 80 for the regular web server, but for AMT, it's 16992. Hit enter, and you will see the Intel AMT web page. This uh, web page is available even if the computer is off or if the OS is not available. And the, the network interception uh, is so that the traffic going from your browser to this web page never goes to the operating system. It's basically the operating system will never see this, this query. Instead, it's intercepted to the management engine, and that's how AMT is able to display this page. So what do we have here? A system status, the system is currently powered on. It doesn't have to be on. You could be sleeping or soft off. This page would still be accessible. We have hardware inventory information, memory, disk, battery, and so on. This is gathered every time the computer is booted. The BIOS will get, gather that information and push it down to, the, um, to AMT. So, so basically, this information is as good as the last boot of the machine. Then you have an event log. You have remote control where you can reset the computer remotely from here. So if, you, if the computer is stuck or something, you can access this web page, hit reset from here, and like remotely hard reset the computer. Um, another thing that's interesting is wireless settings. If the, when the OS is not present, then AMT will take over the built-in Wi-Fi, and it will um, it will associate to access points uh, using the profiles that are available here. Uh, otherwise, when the OS takes over and boots correctly, then it will boot and take over the, the Wi-Fi adapter. But if you want to be able to access AMT through Wi-Fi, you, you do want to set up these profiles here so that AMT can associate independent of the OS. So anyway, that's the built-in web page here. There's a couple more options I won't cover, but that's the essentials of it. Now, if you want to do more interesting things, what you do is you install and run Mesh Commander. Now, Mesh Commander is available at meshcommander.com. It is a free piece of software, uh, com completely open source. The source code is on GitHub. And what you do is you add a computer, you type a friendly name, the host name. This would be the IP address you're accessing, and the username and password. This is the password you typed on MEPX a minute ago. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to connect to this computer. Now, if you get this error, and I did this on purpose, this is because if you, like I just did, reset uh, the AMT activation, then the digest realm won't match the old connection that you had. So you just click Remove, say OK, and then Connect again. And then it will re-register the new digest realm with the tool. So this is an additional protection just so that if, if you're connecting uh, to an AMT machine, if the tool detects that it's not the same one you connected before, then it, it does this warning. In any case, uh, what do we have here? Well, we have uh, the power state of the machine. It's currently powered on. We can do reset, reset to BIOS, power down, and so on. Um, we can also change the domain name and uh, the, the domain suffix for the machine, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of options here. We can synchronize the clock inside AMT. But the most important is remote desktop. And this allows you to remotely access the machine independently of the OS. 
Here there's an error because this feature is not currently enabled, but I can go in this menu, enable it. I can also go in system status um, and let's see, active features, and I can enable it here. But I'm gonna go back to remote desktop, enable this feature, say okay. And then when I hit connect, I am going to be remotely accessing the screen of that computer. So if I fit, flip to a split screen here, you'll notice that the remote computer now has a border uh, that is blinking around the screen of the computer. In fact, you can see it in real time here on my, my webcam view. So this border that's blinking is not seen by the operating system. It's basically AMT is projecting it on the hardware uh, of the built-in graphics adapter of uh, AMT that's uh, of the CPU that's um, inside the Intel CPU. So if I disconnect, then you'll see the border will take a little minute here and will not show up anymore. If I reconnect, then the border will show up once more. Now, the other thing is AMT is grabbing the graphics straight off of your graphic adapter. It's also presenting to the operating system a USB mouse and keyboard. So as long as the operating system is good enough to grab those two devices, then you'll be able to move the mouse and you'll be able to type the uh, password or type into the remote, device, remote computer. So there he goes. I'm basically remotely accessing this computer. And basically, the, the OS has no idea that I'm doing this remotely. As far as the OS is concerned, I'm fully local on that machine. Okay. Now, uh, another thing that's interesting is I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to go back to uh, system status here. And here in uh, user consent, it says not required. I'm going to switch it to KVM. So I'm going to require user consent to be enabled. Now, if you're familiar with Intel CCM, Intel Client Control Mode, that's a different activation system for AMT. And that one, user consent is always on. So I'm going to go back, hit connect. And now something different is going to happen. And I am going to switch to my split view here. Actually, let me disconnect and reconnect again. And so we see that clearly. What's happening is that the graphic adapter, and we can see it on my screen here, the graphic adapter is overlaying this box. And it is saying there's a code that needs to be typed in. And then simultaneously, AMT is presenting to the remote viewer a prompt to enter this code. So I'm just going to go ahead and type it in. 82201. And there you go. I have access to the machine. So this is how uh, user consent works. So uh, in some modes of AMT, you'll have no choice. You'll have to do this user consent. But if you're in active control mode, uh, I'm sorry, admin control mode, uh, then you can go in here and you can remove that, and then you can access the machine without consent uh, on the other side. Okay, So that's pretty cool. And also, there's a bunch of other things you can play with. For example, settings here, color settings. You can basically say, I want less, um, I want less color so it goes faster. But obviously, you'll see that the screen is you know, not as good <laughs> color-wise here. It's like 8-bit colors. But I'll go back settings switch to 16-bit colors, and we get a much better view now. But of course, it doubles the amount of data. So that's good. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing just for fun. I'm going to switch back here. I'm going to do power action, and I'm just going to do a reset, so, so, just so you see what happens. Now, this is a hard reset, so I'm going to hit OK. And now what's going to happen is the remote machine is going to reboot like a you know a fairly hard reboot. It's, it's a little bit like you unplug and replug the, the plug. But as I do that, I'm not going to lose connection uh, on Mesh Central. Uh, I'm sorry, on Mesh Commander. So I can still see the, the remote machine. I can still see it boot. And I can do that even though I'm um, 
uh, I'm still, you know, I rebooted the machine. So if you had a normal piece of software, like an OS software, you would not be able to do this. So I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna kick it here, there it goes. So anyway, it was a little fast and I, I, I couldn't get it quite right, but you can see the boot process um, uh, through Mesh Commander, even if you know, other software would have lost connectivity. So the nice thing about this is that it complements the software agent. If you're running Mesh Central, there's a software agent this hardware agent also com complements it, so you can control the machine you know, using software to transfer files and stuff like that, but, in, um, but you get extra features if, you're, if you also have AMT. So for example, you can wake up the machine or re-image it or something if the OS has a problem. Anyway, I this was a quick demonstration of Intel AMT getting it set up through MEBX. Uh, the built-in web page, and also Mesh Commander. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much.